today's story we are going to look at uh, one of the elements that uh, probably in most cases you find yourself requiring in your project and um, in this case it will be basically exporting your uh, layer into JSON format so this could be <coughs> for example um, you've loaded layer layers or data into your maps and um, you want users of the map to uh, download this data into GeoJSON. So um, as you can see here, I have a sample map. This is from the official reflect documentation. So I've just changed a uh, uh, little uh, things. So um, so what basically, um, if you look at the code here, you're going to see that uh, basically there's nothing much. I've just added only one layer called uh, towns. And in this layer, of course, there's a base map and there's the map itself. So this one you'll find it within the leaflet uh, official documentation. I've just added um, quite a few things, uh, but basically this line, the, job, the jQuery, um, the towns and the data itself. So uh, in this case, um, what you can see here is a map that represents the point. I've not even added uh, events such as pop-ups and all that. So I uh, remember creating the divs for the maps and everything. You can adjust those ones to your specifications. So when it comes to the map, I want us to add a button in the map uh, window where we can uh, basically download this data. So in, um, in, in various cases, you find that, um, for example, I've given the path to this data, so which I have here. But remember, assuming this one was a source, that was basically from another server or somewhere so the data is not available uh, locally so you want a button that you can download the data so um to do that it's not uh, quite difficult but um um let's add a button below here that says uh, download data and i'll do this so to add that button there's a div here that basically i've given the width and the height so these have just adjusted quite a, a little bit. So we can just add a div down here um, that we can uh, have the, uh, the button. Alternatively, I could just add the button directory. So I could just, um, maybe this one will reference to just put a hash. So it will not be leading to, uh, to just load the, the same, it will be on the same page. And then I can just, uh, <coughs> give the button an ID, which I can call maybe export. Yeah, I can call it export. And then the name that will appear on the button um, is basically export data. So something like that. Uh, oh, sorry. I can have that. So um, I can just, uh, for now, if I reload the page, it will just be um, uh, a link. So if someone clicks on this, we want um, that it will download this data into G, uh, GeoJSON format. So um, come here. So because um, it's a click event, so we'll be required to add some scripts that will basically process uh, the on-click uh, uh, event. So to do that, I can just add it within the this script here, or I can just create another um, a script component here um, <clears throat> so here what we are going to do is uh, basically we first start with uh, getting the element ID of that specific um, um, button so here um, I'll use the get um, element by ID which basically I'm required to reference to the ID of the button which basically we call export and then we'll bind an on-click method on it. So we'll say, ah, oh, sorry, this is usually small c, yeah, like that. So we shall see that, uh, or we shall say, uh, when the document, when everything loads, or basically when the map loads, we get the element uh, using this ID, basically export here. And then on click, then we have a function. I don't know why I'm having a lot of typos. Um, <coughs> We basically uh, add a function to process the on-click event on that button. 
So the first thing that we can do is basically um, because we want to download these markers and some instances maybe if you have errors the markers will not load and if this button is still here someone is expected like if you click the data will download so we can start by checking whether that layer is available on the map so we can say if so within a leaflet there are some uh, methods or functions that we can basically use so we can check if map has this specific layer um, so in my case the layer is called towns okay so um forgetting some of the syntax okay there so has layer towns there then <clears throat> if it has this uh, uh layer then we need to now uh go on with our processing so the first thing we can do is basically uh converting the markers or the layer themselves into what we call a geojson because the markers that are basically here are the ones that we want to convert into geojson and then download that data to our computer so um what i'll do i'll just uh, i can just maybe uh download data will be equal to so towns which is basically our layer and then we can so there's a method within a leaflet that you can use to convert a layer into geojson so and the method is here so geojson so it will look like that so after we have the data um the next thing is that we need to attach that data to the on this we are basically within the on click method so we need now that we've converted this data into geojson when someone or a user clicks on this button that is when this is done okay so but um as you know the conventions of uh, a link or basically um a click event we need to reference to a certain url which this data will be attached to so now this will convert this data into geojson but basically we need to uh, generate a file because what we have here remember we do not have any link so this one can yes um uh do what we call like um if i was to do this <coughs> um if i was to console um then i can say data converted like that if i was to run this map and i open my console here i'll see that um if i click on this button it will basically tell me data yes converted but look at this there's nothing that has been downloaded so we need to create that link which we basically reference to where the data is located and it will download the data to our machine so to do that we'll be required to <coughs> generate a path dynamically so here i can just say uh, or maybe i can just call it uh, data path um, which we need to generate this uh, uh, this link dynamically so i can maybe um, the first so there are usually so many ways in which you can do this depending on what uh, is required but i can uh, create a, a path a dynamic path that will basically be your format json and then of course there's a uh, the cassette so we give it a um a code so utf8 that is basically the the usual one and then uh here i can say that this path will be having data that is json and we have given it a sorry this character set cassette yes that way uh utf8 and then we add so we can basically add uh the path because we need the path or this json that we are referring to here needs to be attached or to refer to this data okay so here we can say json dot string file so we just uh string file everything of course if you've uh, dealt with um, some of these methods you know how they work some of them there are some characters that they ignore others uh, basically um, consider some kind of a uh, uh, conversions so we can say that json dot string file uh sorry not data but this this one download data but then uh this the uh, 
the path or the information that you get from here <coughs> might not really work because of the uh, some of the uh, the strings or some of the uh, components that basically are within the output that will be generated if we stringify this data. So um, it's usually a recommendation that you can use some uh, element or methods such as uh, encode. So for example, you can just do this. Um, so we know there are usually so many uh, encoding uh, options, so we can encode this URL. But because we know how your JSON is structured, there are some features that might have errors. So to be on the safe side, we because things like forward slashes and all that, if the the data has um, there's a column that has data that has such kind of elements, such as this, sometimes it's usually an issue. So um, uh, instead of using the encode URI, you can just use the URI, uh, the encode URI component. Okay, so now with that, this is expected to generate a full path uh, with this data. And we've, of course, given it the format of GeoJSON, uh, sorry, of JSON and uh, UTF-8. So from there, we need to attach this path to this button up here. Okay, so to do that, um we can just say uh, document get element by id and then uh, we refer again to the button which is basically here this one here so we set an attribute so we set an attribute so remember all this is being uh, done on the fly so we are going to change some of these elements for example we can change the the reference hyperlink here so we just say href so this is the attribute that we want to change and then we'll give it uh, a path such as data um, sorry that data and then we can add and then we'll be adding this path or this option that has been generated here so we add data path okay so data path there so what this will do, um, it will dynamically set the option of this button, which is basically the uh, reference here. It will set to this path that is here. Okay, so the moment you click on that button, this is what will be generated. And because there's data, that's the data that will be downloaded. So there you have <coughs> data, then data path. And then the last thing is basically... Uh, setting the option of now downloading everything and giving it a name that will be downloaded to your computer. So again, we repeat the get um, element by ID. It's the same button, so export. And then we set an attribute. And then in this case, so here we just say download and then uh, we give the file a name. So we can maybe call it towns, yeah, towns.geo.json, for example. There you are. So now we've set the attributes of this uh, button. So we've changed the href and then the download uh, attribute. So this is what basically will be downloaded. This is the file name that will be downloaded to your computer. And then we have the path. So basically everything is okay here. So just to confirm, we've closed that, we've closed that, we've closed everything. All right. So now <coughs> this one will just uh, basically process what we need. So we are doing a, quite a number of things here. The first thing is converting the data to GeoJSON. The second one uh, is generating a path that has uh, the reference to the data that we need. And then we set these two attributes within the button or the link that we have here to download the data. So remember, we had checked whether the layer is there. Maybe if um, uh, the layer is not there, we could maybe give it a name. Uh, sorry, we can give the user a message. Probably can give an alert. Yeah. So you can say maybe you no know, towns data available uh, or not data or layer. Yeah, something like that. So now we expect this one to work. Um, so here I've already explained what uh, we are basically doing. 
and this is the simple aspect of doing all that so let's test it and see so yes i have my button here so if i click on it yes look at what has happened so i have the json uh data and if i was to open this data um let me just uh, open it so if i open a file so i can go to my downloads you can see my towns.json here i download and here is my data okay so of course um i can visualize it um it's coming yes so that's how my data looks like i can actually visualize it there so i can see the points and everything including the attributes everything has been downloaded and i can actually confirm that the data that was downloaded is correct and can be used so that is basically how you add a download uh, option within the map so next time you are creating your map uh, in case you need users to download data in geojson format that's how you do it um of course whatever uh we've written here um there are basically quite a number of things that someone could do differently but the end game is basically uh being able to um uh, ensure that the functionality to allow the data is there of course there are there are things like uh, the um the options that we set here uh the methods that we use basically someone might decide to use a different option but eventually the download will work so that's it guys thank you for watching remember to subscribe this week i'll be releasing quite a number of videos and also going forward um so now uh, there will be quite a number of uh, tutorials coming on board on this channel subscribe so